Hi, this is Katherine Schneider from the Fitchburg Historical Society, and we're here this afternoon with uh, Barbara Matthews. Uh, and we are about to tell the story of the Fitchburg Library and how it came to be and all the work that went into uh, bringing it into the community. And Barbara was the first president of the Friends of the Fitchburg Library. So welcome, Barbara. So glad you can be with us to, uh, to really let us know about what, uh, what went into making the library what it is today, all the work. So I think many of the newer residents in Fitchburg probably are not aware of uh, the fact that a library in Fitchburg is just a fairly recent addition to the community and uh, that it was, there was a great deal of grassroots efforts that went into bringing about, bringing it into creation. Um, would you give us maybe some background about when and how the Friends of the Fitchburg Library came about and then um, why it was formed? Sure. It's uh, wonderful to be here with you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, back in 2006, the mayor at the time, Tom Clotter, formed an ad hoc library committee. And that committee looked at potential costs of a library, um, location, design. When they finally decided that they wanted to move on, they formed an, uh, a library board of trustees, which is something that you officially do with the state of Wisconsin. Um, that library board then asked me to start a friends group because we were going to have to go to referendum in order to fund this library, in order for the city to, to come up with the money for it. And they wanted a friends group to be um, kind of a, a, a continuation of the library to the community, kind of um, something that would stand in the shoes of the library until the library was built. It would give the city that sense of what they could really expect for the money that was going to be invested in the library. Mm -hmm. So in 2007, we formed the Friends of the Fitchburg Library, and it was a true grassroots effort. We had no librarian to guide us. We had no volunteers that had library experience. We met at a local coffee shop a couple times a week and tried to formulate a plan. It was um, a lot of fun. A lot of fun, and it sounds like an exciting new new uh, venture, but but perhaps with no particular guidance in terms of what what had been done prior to it. It was it was new territory you were Correct. getting it, into. It was very new territory for all of us. For all of you yeah. without the experience and yet you were willing to go ahead and venture forth and see what you could do in terms of, of having a library go to referendum to the voters. It was important to all of us. At, at that time Fitchburg had 25,000 residents. It was the largest city in Wisconsin that did not have a library. Mm. Um, yet, the statistics shown that people had checked out over 300,000 books during that year. And the only library service they had was a bookmobile five hours a week. So the interest was there. It was just coming up with a plan. Mm -hmm. So there was a bookmobile at that point that would visit in Fitchburg then? Yes. How often did the bookmobile come come to locate in Fitchburg then? It was five hours a week at, oh. at different locations. I see. Mm -hmm. Five hours a week <laughs> compared to having a library yes. on site uh, yes. as, as a building. Um, so. Uh, important to have a library in Fitchburg. Um, what would you say were the primary reasons? Obviously, there was people were wanting to uh, have access to library materials with having that many checked out. Uh, and uh, if you were to say, what were the reasons? The reasons behind wanting a library. I think Fitchburg is, is a very unique city. Um, as I said, it was the largest city in Wisconsin without a library. But it has no school district. It has no post office. It has no downtown area. It has no real sense of community that people can gather. A library would meet that function. It, it would satisfy that function. And a library is worth a lot more than books. It, it's made up of a lot more than books. It's resources for teens, it's um, programs for children, it's gathering spaces for groups. 
So it would meet a lot of the need that the community had. Mm -hmm. A community center. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, well, tell us about the formation of the Friends of the Fitchburg Library. What was your maybe monetary resources, um, how you organized legally, uh, what kind of space? You said a coffee shop you met in a couple yes. times a week. <laughs> maybe just some of those yes. details. We had a lot of help from the community. The um, Economic Development Fund in the city of Fitchburg provided us with an amount of money to get started. We had a local attorney in town, Dan Hardy, who gave us um, legal services. He formed our corporation for us. He helped us apply for charitable status with the federal government so that when people donated to the library, it would be tax deductible. Um, Adesis, uh, a local uh, IT company here in town provided us with a website. Avante Properties provided us then with 3,000 square feet of space. Um, just right next door to where the library is now, um, so that we had an operating space and didn't have to operate in the books in the coffee shop anymore. So we had um, a lot of support from the community. That's wonderful to it hear was. about all the different ways you were supported. So starting out uh, at the grassroots, not quite knowing how that how you would be operating and proceeding, and then to have all of these different entities step forth to help you uh, mm -hmm. must have given you some of the confidence to, to continue on with your work. It did. It did. It gave us a, a lot of energy. <laughs> good, good. Um, so um, here you were, you know, friends of, the, friends of the Fitchburg Library organization before the library was built. So what were your goals, and then how did you recruit people to volunteer, help you out? Um, what did that look like? Well, our, our initial goal was to get that referendum passed. <laughs> that, was, that was the most important thing. And, and to do that, we had to find ways to engage the community. Um, so we, we put together um, a plan um, to try to accomplish that. And it was um, a 10 point a 10 point plan that we came up with. Um, the goal, I think, after, after finally getting the referendum passed was to then further the mission of the library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So could you elaborate maybe on some of those plans? You had a 10 step plan. I did, and I actually wrote them down ah. because I didn't <laughs> want to forget some of them. Um, well, the first was um, the book sales that we had. Um, every month we had a book sale on Friday and Saturday, and that was our the way that we raised the most money. We solicited book donations through drop boxes. We put drop boxes throughout the community. And funny thing was, some people thought that they were returning library books to those <laughs> drop boxes. And so occasionally we would get a book in there and we'd say, oh, oh, this has to go back to the Piney Branch or this has to go back someplace else. Um, we developed a trifold brochure that was made to every household in Fitchburg, and I brought a copy of that oh, along. Wonderful. Because this is the brochure that won us an award with the um, American Library Association. And it tells, now is the time, and it shows insert library here, and there's just a vacant space. Oh. But inside, we said, what can a library do for Fitchburg? Who are the friends? And then there were ways to contribute and to volunteer. Oh. We're, we were very proud of this. But it went to every household in Fitchburg, and the response was amazing. We got lots of volunteers. At one time, we had over 100 volunteers. That is amazing for was, an organization. It was amazing. 100 <laughs> volunteers. It was. I think the city was ready. So we held um, author events and musical programs in our space. We gave away thousands of bookmarks to local schools. And those bookmarks, if they brought them to the book sales, the children could have a free book. Oh. Um, we did book giveaways in English and in Spanish and Spanish dictionaries. We ran a question and answer column in the local newspaper that highlighted the benefits of the library. We held story time and craft projects for children at the book sales. Um, and we maintained a presence at any gathering in Fitchburg, whether it was the farmer's market, the concerts at McKee, um, the art fair, and that usually involved giving away free books to children. 
And then uh, Jeannie Seelig, the former mayor, and I taped a segment for FAT TV to give residents an idea of what a library would mean mm. for the community. Wonderful. So you had multi ways of, of reaching out into the community uh, and various events and made your presence very much known what you were about and what you were working toward. And I'm particularly taken with your brochure of insert library here and then that's the space where the that's library right. would, be, <laughs> would be built. A lot of talent went into preparing the brochure, all your other activities that you were involved, talent and energy to get all of this we, done. We had an amazing board of directors. Everybody, we called it a working board because we were all that was to begin with. And we had some very talented people on there, including the graphic artist who put this together mm. for us. Mm. And uh, while we're on this topic, uh, we know that the Friends of the Fitchburg Library were recognized multiple times with, um, with awards for your efforts from the American Library Association. So um, the recognition must have just been a boost for you also to to have them say you have done a, an amazing it job. It was, it was. This brochure, another um, program, a musical program where we had flyers made up, both won awards, they were called Good Friends Awards, um, and then our, our story about forming a friends group before there was a library pushing the referendum, the whole story. That won the Baker Taylor Award one year, which um, is a very prestigious award with the Library Association for Friends Groups. And it came with a nice check for us. So oh. <laughs> we were very happy. And, and a little plaque that's still in the friend's office now at the uh, library. Uh, so I'm sure you knew where to put that check to good use, <laughs> yes, too. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> with the library and working toward that. Well, how wonderful to receive that recognition as you were going along and, and doing this work to create a library for the community. Um, how long after the formation of the Friends of the Fitchburg Library did the library celebrate its grand opening? First question. And then what do you feel were the most important contributions of the Friends of the Fitchburg Library made to the realization of a library for the Fitchburg community. So sort of the time frame, you were yeah. formed in 2006, you said, 2007. 2007. Yeah, the ad hoc committee um, that Tom Clotter formed was in 2006, mm. then the library board, then the Friends Group, 2007, I think the fall of 2007, and then the grand opening for the library was 2011. So, so it four was, years yeah, after, almost, after almost your four years, yeah. Four years of a lot of a lot of hard work. A lot, a lot of hard work, but a lot of fun, ah. you know. And a, a friends now that will be lifetime friends for me that mm. I didn't know before. Mm. You know, we we for, well the first thing I did when we started the friends was to contact Jeannie Seelig because I knew that if anybody in the community knew people, it was Jeannie, <laughs> and so. She and I got together and came up with a, a group of people that we thought would be really helpful in this effort. Great. That's great. Yeah. So your realization then uh, of, of it coming to be. Um, so if you were to say what the contributions of the Friends of the Fitchburg Library were to the creation of the library, maybe in one sentence, what would you say? I think um, giving the community a sense of what they could expect in a library mm. and the monetary contributions that we made. Because mm -hmm. before the library was built, I think we were able to contribute twenty or $25,000. And then the ongoing contributions now from book sales and different programs and events that the friends hold. Mm. And yes, and to say that you were in the um, uh, in the ground floor in terms of getting the library going, but to say that the Friends of the Fitchburg Library ongoing in their contributions to the library and, uh, and making sure the community 
knows about the library, promotes the events, and and the monetary uh, financial help given to the library also. Right. Uh, and, wonder, and providing volunteers. And providing, oh yes, and of library, course, yes. the volunteers for the library. Well, what gives you, Barbara, the most satisfaction as you look back on the time and effort the Friends of the Fitchburg Library put into the goal of having a library in Fitchburg? I think the most satisfaction I get now, um, besides this beautiful building that we have, wonderful staff that we have, um, the resources that are there for the whole community, is the fact that the organization is still strong and it's still making a difference in the community. It's still helping people to understand that a library is more than just books. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a succinct way of saying a library is more than books. Yes. So much more. Yes. And you and your group, Friends of the Fitchburg Library, helped to bring it about with your grassroots advocacy, your hard work, all the ways you promoted it through the years, bringing it to referendum, helping get it to referendum, and the support that you got from the community. So thank you on behalf of the Fitchburg community who are now enjoying the fruits of your labor. Um, and I think you are a perfect example, you and the other volunteers, 100, of, 100 volunteers yes. <laughs> and many more since then, I'm sure, yes. who, um, who care very much about um, making community a better place to live because of having something like the Verona, the Fitchburg Library to uh, be in the community. So thank you very much, Barbara. Thank you for letting us tell our story. You're welcome. And I wanted to just say also that um, the um, uh, Fitchburg Historical Society is located, we're so grateful for being located in, in the Fitchburg Library. And uh, we have a home there because of, of what you and others have done. And we also have a website. We're located in the library, but we also um, have a website, fitchburghistory.org, where this interview will be placed. Um, and we are, um, we are very grateful for being able to tell the story through you, Barbara, of the Fitchburg um, Library and the friends of the Fitchburg Library. Thank you very much. Thank you.